What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at messages for Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at messages. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Flask Friday, my favorite day of the week. And in this video, we're going to look at messages. So you see, I've submitted the form from our last video, and it says, hello, John, down here. And now we get this cool little message up here, and it says your form was submitted successfully. It's got a little X on it. We can click on it. It kind of fades away nicely. If we come back here and type something else and submit it again, form was submitted successfully. Now we can change this message. We can change the color of this thing. We can change whether or not it has an X on it, all the things. And we're going to look at that in this video. So let's head back over to our code and let's open our hello.py file. This is our main file that sort of holds all the guts of our program here. And to use messages, we have to import something up here at the top. So from Flask, import Flask. We're also importing render template. And we also want to import Flash. So these are technically Flash messages. They flash up on the screen whenever you need them. So Flask makes messages just drop dead simple. So let's come down here and wherever we want a message, we just have to sort of create it. So we're in our name function here because we want this to occur on our name page here, right? Localhost slash name. So inside of this function, we just have to define the flash message and sort of say where we want it. So we've got our form stuff and we've got this if statement here. So we're validating the form submission right here. So if the form dot validate on submit, then we do some stuff. Well, right here is where I want my flash message in this case. So to use it, we just call the flash function. And then inside of here, we pass in whatever little message we want to flash to the screen. So in this case, I'll say form submitted successfully. Is that how you spell successfully? <laughs> so, okay, that is all you have to do. We don't have to push anything here. Now, normally when we sort of pass variables or things to a website, we have to use these variables down here in our return render template function, right? So we pass name, which is the form name, or I guess this form name, and the form itself, right? This thing, we're passing these into the web page, and then we can then use them. We don't have to do that with flash messages, because we imported flash up here. Flask, not to be confused with flash, knows what to do with them. So We've created this. Now this will just work whenever we run our form thing right here. So we're almost there. Now we need to make a little change in our name.html file because this is the, the file where we want this. We have to sort of tell Flask where we want that message to pop up. So the message system will return potentially more than one message. So we need to loop through the messages and then just print them individually out onto the screen. So uh, let's see, we've got our block content here. And here's our if statement for the hello name stuff. So right above here, I'm going to go for message in get underscore flashed underscore messages. And this is a function. So make sure you've got your function here. All right, let me make this a little smaller, put it all in one line. So for message in get flashed messages, right. And now anytime we create a for loop, we always have to end our four, Let's do that right away. And inside of here, we can just type message. All right, so go ahead, save this. And let's come back over here and reload our name page. And now we can just type in a name, click submit, it says form submitted successfully. And there's our message. Now this does not look cool. But this is the message, right? So okay, that's awesome. Now, what if we want to make the little box that we had at the beginning of this video? Well, that's a bootstrap thing. So let's go to getbootstrap.com and click on docs and then come down here to components and then alerts. And here's a bunch of alerts we can use. Now these are just regular alerts with no little checkbox. So we probably don't want that. Uh, looking through here, here's with the different links in them. We probably don't want that. Here's a, a big one. We definitely don't want that or maybe you do. And here we go. Here's one that just has the stuff and a little checkbox. When we click it, it sort of fades away. And you can read about making it fadeable or not in here by adding the dot fade right here. So you can take that out if you want. But 
this is what we want, this thing right here. So let's go ahead and copy this, head back over to our code. And inside of our for loop here, I'm just gonna paste that all in. And let me tab this over. And then instead of all of this text right here, we just put our message, right, this guy. So let me copy this and let's put this right there, save this, and that's really all we need to do. So let's come back over here and let's hit reload and try this again. And now it says form submitted successfully. We've got the little X. Now watch this when I click the X, it kind of fades away, watch. It's very quick, but it, it fades. If you don't want that, we can come down here and just get rid of this fade. So we save that, let's come back here, hit reload, try it again. Now when we do it, boom, it just disappears. I like the fade, so I'm gonna leave the fade in there. And uh, that's, that's all there is to that. Now we can change the color of this if we want. You see right here, the class that's being called is alert, alert-warning. And if you know anything about Bootstrap, the color system is, well, it's just right here. So yellow is warning. If we look down here for this, it's gonna be the one, two, three, fourth from the bottom, one, two, three, fourth from the bottom, warning, right? So right above it, red, danger. Maybe you want danger. Above that green, success. So maybe you want success. We can copy this, bring it back over here to our code. And instead of warning, we could type in success. If we save this, come back over here, hit reload. Boom, now it's green. Eh, maybe that is what you want. There's other things, there's this light blue, that's the very first one, that's primary. And these labels work for buttons too. So if you want a blue button, it's a primary button. If you want the gray button, it's a secondary button. If you want green, it's success, red is danger, yellow is warning, et cetera, et cetera. So, that sort of color scheme holds through throughout Bootstrap. So almost anytime you wanna change a color, you can use those labels to change the color to these colors, right? So let's head back over here and let's try primary, see how that looks. You know, it's Flask Friday, we're just playing around. Hit reload, boom, oh, maybe like that, I don't know. I kinda of like the yellow, I think I'll stick with that. So let's change this back to warning, save this, come back over here, uh, Tim, Hello, Tim, form submitted successfully. So, you know, this is very generic, form submitted successfully, but as our app gets more complicated, we can custom tailor these messages for specific situations. So, you know, we can't, for instance, if we come back here and just don't fill out anything, it won't let us submit the form because of the, the what the forms that we did in the last video. But if that didn't exist and we wanted to throw a, a warning that said, hey, you forgot to fill out your thing, we could do that as well, uh, but we don't need to do it now because it's already got this little thing here. We could uh, pass in something else to our message too, everything that's already on our page. So for instance, name, we could come up here and do message. We could do something like, hey, name. Come back here, hit reload. Now it says, hey, Tina, form submitted successfully, right? So you can play around with that in any way you wanted to. Not really what this video is about. I'll take this out. But you know, you can play around with it any way you want. So, so we don't just have to use these with forms. We can play around with this anywhere we want. So for instance, on our index page, if we wanted to come in here and say, flash, welcome to our website. I don't know why you would want to do this, but you could save this now open up our index Let's see index.html and up here if we come back over here to our name and grab this whole block and come back and paste that in there we could and now if we save this come back over here and go back to our main page right away when you come to the main page the first time it says welcome to our website Right? If you reload it, boom, it comes back up. Now I have no idea why in the world you would want to do that. But if you did, you could using flash messages. So there's all kinds of uses for this. Now, obviously, I don't think this is a good idea because this is just silly. But I'm just trying to point out that you can use these not just with forms and form submissions, you can use them in any sort of way you want to pass any sort of message you want to any sort of page of your website that you want at any time. So maybe that's handy, maybe it's useful, maybe it's not. It just sort of depends on your app and what you're trying to do. 
But anytime you want to flash a message like that, just that easy and uh, pretty cool. So I will get rid of that because <laughs> I don't think we need that on our index page. Uh, we come back to our hello.py file. Let me just take out that again. Save this. Come back here, hit reload, make sure that's gone. Okay, and it's gone. But this one still works. Hey, form submitted successfully and pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.